Hi, welcome to Team Muller Sheep Reviews. Multimeters. What on earth is a multimeter? Now, lots of people have seen them. There's lots of different shapes and sizes. This is the more modern and popular design. There's little small ones and ones like that and pocket sized ones. But what are they? Multimeters have been around a part of my life for a long time and I forget that perhaps some people don't know what it is or how to use it and whatever. And a friend of mine asked me, he said, uh, how do I use a multimeter? I said, what do you mean, how do you use a multimeter? You just switch it on and test. And he said, yeah, but how? I've got quite a few multimeters. How have I got so many multimeters? <laughs> I don't know. But, when I was apprentice, I bought this and I saved up my pennies and I bought this, this little multimeter. And I loved this little multimeter. It was made by Ross. Uh, funny enough, my son is named Ross and maybe that was an influence. Son, you was named after a multimeter. Sorry. <laughs> of course, working as an electrician, I had testers of various descriptions and I hold, in my toolbox, I always carried a small pocket multimeter and this was like a credit card design and it still works but it's still quite handy to use if if you need to check the voltage or something what would you use you know this i automatically grab a multimeter test the voltage is it working now one thing i always do if i test something i don't assume it's it's dead it's not working there's something wrong I look for something to test. Is there power there? Yes. Is there power there? No. Is there power there? Yes. Is there power there? No. To prove that the meter is actually registering something. Don't just go, oh, it's dead, and that's the end of it. So you always test and prove. So you prove it on something first. That can be important. That could save your life. And eventually, you spend the money and you get uh, a tidy multimeter. This is uh, a fluke. It's a fluke. It's a 77 series multimeter. It's a good bit of kit. Very reliable. I've had this calibrated several times. What I, what I mean when they calibrate it, it gets sent off, comes back with a certificate and it's been tested and because they're a professional grade they're adjusted to be as accurate as they could possibly be. Oddly enough I did send that away once and had that certified and it actually come back. Didn't he? I don't think they could adjust it but it was within tolerances which is good but you've got to pay for that now what does it got on it it's got a v with a squiggly line and a v with a straight line and some dashes underneath it what does that mean well v is for voltage the squiggly line is ac voltage alternating current and the v with a straight line is dc voltage what comes out of the sockets on the wall is AC voltage, alternating current. DC voltage is generally your batteries. So for all the tests that we're going to do, uh, mostly it will be on the DC. If you try to read voltage with the AC, it just comes up with garbage. So if you're doing battery voltage, you'll put it on the DC, which is the straight line. That's all I'm going to tell you about that. It's also got the ohms symbol. So if you wanted to test something and check the resistance of something then you could put it on that setting and it will tell you how many ohms. Why is that important? Would you need to do it? Probably not. So let's say for example you've got a resistor in your heater matrix for your car, something like that, and stamped upon it is a is 68R. That's telling me it's 68 ohms. So you could take your meter, you could put your meter on there to test it. Is it working? 68 ohms. So I know that that's working as a 68 ohm resistor. The next option is the diode or the beeper. What would you want to use that for? Well, you may want to test a diode, but we're not going into electronics, but you may have a fuse. You get different types of fuse. These are glass fuses, and you can see if a fuse is blown in there, but you're never quite sure. So put the meter leads on there. You know that fuse is good. Test that fuse, you can't physically see it, 
but I know it's working. You can even do maybe some bulbs. Will it work through a bulb? Yes, it will, because there's continuity through the element. So this is a little continuity tester, so you can test. You get an, a peculiar switch, you think, right, I want another switch, but there's three connections. So you could check between the middle one and the outer one, nothing happens. So they're not doing anything. I check the, the first one and the middle one, and the first one, the outer one. Oh, I got something on the outer one. Press the button and it stops. So I know then, but the connection between the outer ones gives me a short circuit all the time, a continuous connection. And when I press it, it breaks the connection because I've now tested with my multimeter and can confirm that for it to work as a push to make, I've got it on the, I've got it on them too. And when I press it, so that is using a multimeter to test a switch. So your multimeter can come in very handy for testing lots of things. That's handy for fuses, testing switches, checking continuity things, checking for, for little breaks in, in cables. So it is handy. But then there's some A symbols. A, A for amps. Now, this is where things go dramatically wrong. Now, if I want to measure amps, then what I would need to do is take take the red lead out and put it in the amps setting. So I can now read amps. But if I measured voltage while it's in that amp setting, it will be because I will then be putting a direct voltage across the amp sensor that's in your, the sensor that's measuring the current will be a dead short. So it will blow the meter. This The meter has got a fuse in there to protect it. This has got a fuse. They all have fuses. Maybe some cheap one might not. So, but generally a meter would have protection. So it's always good for, to never, ever, ever leave the red lead or any leads in there and only put it in there if you have to do amps because if an electrician like myself picks up the meter and it's there like so and he's not familiar with this meter he might without thinking put it on the bolt take the readings and then realize his mistake i've done it myself i blew up my friend's meter and i really did blow it up it was a cheap one and he passed the meter to me i put it on to voltage and i checked the voltage on a fan in his bathroom i think it was and sure as eggs i put mains voltage straight across the current like i said it was a cheap meter it was a meter very similar to something like this this hasn't got a current option on it but it was a cheap meter that looked something like that but it was a cheap plastic thing and boom so i blew it up so never leave it in amps if you do an amps test you test you unplug it and put it back into voltage and then you'll never have a problem let's get on the bench is it let's do a test so you've got a battery and you've got a light bulb so you plug the battery in but the light bulb doesn't come on so why hasn't the light bulb come come on because one side of the light bulb is not connected so you know that there's a problem there's the wire and the light bulb comes on so i shall move the that over there's not doing it for you the camera so when it's the circuit is made so if you had a switch you could put a switch there and when the switch makes contacts the light bulb comes on so that's an ideal point for me to measure the current if i transfer my lead from there to 10 amps the highest setting this meter will take up to 10 amps and then i turn it to amps on dc then this will become part of the circuit so when i touch the leads the light should come on but i should get a current reading on there so if i hold that and hold that so i now know that this bulb is drawing four amps off this battery and that is measuring the amount of current that is flowing through the circuit by putting the meter in the circuit now if i went to measure voltage with that it would try to measure the current 
of the circuit running through the meter causing an de absolute dead short which means it would blow the fuse in the meter because it's going to be run up into thousands of amps very very quickly because it's a short circuit so that's not good so once you've finished doing your current test you must obviously turn the meter off but move the leads back never store the meter in that so you put it to dc voltage and there it is 11.92 volts you've also got the balance lead and check the voltage you could check one cell 3.97 volts so you know one cell on that balance lead is 3.97 volts now this meter you may say well that's a little bit different what is this meter well this does exactly the same as this it's got exactly the same function does the voltages different readings i haven't got the current option there but i've got this which is what's called a clamp meter and this only works for ac so if if for example i wanted to know how much current my house is using i can turn it on to, to the amps clamp it onto my house onto the cables feed in the house and it'll actually give me a reading i can actually show you that if you wanted should we do that all right so here we are my electric meter and as you can see these are actually marked live and neutral so this would be the live cable and there's the neutral for the house so with the meter on I, I can clamp it on there and as you can see I'm using 2.21 amps so there's not a lot of power going out the house I think what we got on is the television as you can see now it's taking 13 amps that's back down to two amps so i got a three kilowatt kettle on 237 volts so that was a little exercise when i put the kettle on it shot up and if you use ohm's law and calculate it you divide get the maximum wattage which i think the kettle was 2750 to 3000 watts which and you divide that by the voltage which is 237 so i should give you around about 10 11 amps which is what showed on the meter so as a current meter like i said accuracy questionable but gives you an indicator on the higher end you couldn't do electronics really with with, with uh, for current with this you wouldn't be taking the current checking the current of a dc circuit for example this is for ac this is this is meant for clamping onto a building supply and giving you an idea of how much current is being used in that building so you can kind of check the fuses on that circuit if you're overloading or close to overloading if you've got a 32 amp circuit and it's taking 32 35 amps you think hello with that fuse is going to start getting hot that's what that's for is for an electrician to be checking how much current is out going out there on a circuit so if you're looking to do some basic testing if you're in the hobby the rc hobby and you want to check your batteries you want to check voltages get yourself a nice multimeter you haven't got to go out and buy a fluke fluke multimeter they're very very nice very expensive but they're generally professional standard there are some good alternatives i'll put a, an alternative down below i think banggood are, are selling one that i was kind of interested in like why do i need another meter <laughs> so go out and get yourself a good quality multimeter for doing your testing hope you found that useful like i said some uh, workshop tips and more to come stay safe keep your hands clean and keep them off your bits see you soon thank you for watching t woolly sheep review hit the subscribe button if you like what you see and there's more to come thank you